All right. So welcome to Plopcast number nine. Uh, Comic Book Girl here with also Captain Kirk, as always. Hello. T-Bone will be moderating. I'm over here. And super special guest today, Amy Dallin from Geek and Sundry. Yay! Uh, Yay! Thank you. The most cutest vlogger in the whole world. Whoa. She talks about... I you. I know, I know. But you're cute as a button. You can't oh. help it. Totally going to try to get cat fight out of these two later on. So awesome. you guys should definitely hug check out her stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, hug fight. <laughs> hug fight. <laughs> Uh, yeah, us comic book people, we, we like to hug it out. <laughs> so, yeah, she's amazing. Check out her stuff if you haven't already. She's on Geek and Sundry's vlog uh, site. Why don't you tell us about it, Amy? Yeah, okay, so a couple of months ago, Geek and Sundry, the awesome YouTube channel that you probably all already know and love, like most of us did before we ended up working with them, uh, they <laughs> wanted to expand. Uh, so in addition to their channel of original programming and stuff, they've created a sister channel called Geek and Sundry Vlogs, um, which is a word I'm getting used to. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of turns out to be really fun to say. So vlog. Vlog. It rolls off the tongue a little bit. Vlog. <laughs> You'd think it would be a disaster. But uh, <laughs> so they, they've launched a sister channel, Geek and Sundry Vlogs, and they recruited a, a set of us sort of that they called the, the starter pack. And then they did a public <laughs> contest actually um, to, to gather their expansion pack. Was nice. there like so they did a big contest and everybody submitted and so now there's I think 19 of us awesome. or 19 good number. vlogs going. <laughs> um, it is. Well, have not made that connection. Ah. Um, anyway, so it's, there's all kinds of different topics, but I have been lucky enough to be the, the comic book representative. Um, so yes, this is very and exciting. very well chosen. Very well chosen. I've, I've watched oh, some of your stuff, you. Amy, and I really agree with a lot of stuff that you say. Uh, she works at uh, House of Secrets in Burbank, which Indeed. is super awesome. Like, how long have you been working at a comic book store? It was five years sometime this spring. Yeah. Very cool. So legit. Feels like a lifetime, although my boss is having now been in it for 22, oh, I yeah. think. Oh, like, yeah. It's it's just insane. And uh, hint, if you work at a comic book shop, you probably know and love comics. So <laughs> my first job was a comic shop. <laughs> nice. That's yeah. awesome. I was trying. I to was get... like fourteen. And that's when I definitely know I wanted to drop out of high school, but my mom made me graduate. Yeah. But getting oh, my first job at a comic <laughs> shop is pretty much. I was trying to work yeah. at a comic book shop when I was in high school, but they they never hired me, and I was always really bitter about it. Aww. But whatever. I don't need you. I have my own comic book show now. Well, so you proved them wrong. Yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> All right, well, like and subscribe. <laughs> Let's talk about what we're going to talk about. All today. right, what are we going to talk about today, T-Bone? Right. Today on the show, this is Plopcast number nine, we're going to start with uh, the whole Ben Affleck Bat -fleck. situation. Bat Affleck. Bat Affleck. Okay. Yeah. And then we're going to talk about World's End, because it was a really good movie. Hell yes. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to move into uh, DC Comics territory, and we're going to talk about some kind of gay marriage controversy that's going on? Yeah. Oh, it's just this little thing. Oh, just a small thing. Yeah. And we're going to talk about <laughs> Infinity versus Battle of the Atom. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got opinions. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to hear them. And what I really am excited about today is you're going to do uh, an X-Men State of the Union address. Yes. All right. State of the Union. Because a lot of people are confused. There's so much stuff going on. There's a lot on. of stuff. There's so many X-Men books. I'm overwhelmed. It's I need a lot. to know what's been happening since AVX ended last year. Can do. No problem. All right. <laughs> then Kirk's going to follow up with some superior Spider-Man. I'm basically just going to scream and yell like a schoolgirl. He's very excited. <laughs> this will be the best part. Stay yeah. forward to that. And uh, <laughs> then we're going to talk about Marvel, the untold story, which is a book. A novel. It's a novel. Yes, not a graphic very novel, just a regular novel. A real book, yes. Yeah. <laughs> No oh, pictures. Non-fiction. Et cetera, et cetera, Yeah. And things. Okay. So, Federation. So, Batfleck. And, no. And now is the intro music. Go. And we're back. Okay. So, hey. so, uh, so we, so I did a, a little mini vlog about Batfleck where I essentially said that he may be okay. He's not my first choice. I would prefer an unknown. Uh, but what do what do you guys think, Kirk? What's your feelings on Batfleck? Oh, right off the right off the bat, <laughs> <laughs> I don't get uh, what. <laughs> I, I will say this: he does have a chin that looks like it was drawn by Frank Quitely. Uh, yeah, I can. I can definitely that. see that. <laughs> I can, I can definitely that. think that chin is is a Frank Quitely uh, drawn chin. I would just never have put that together. Wow. Yeah, it's it's it is a it is a very strong. I'm just doing my part. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's actually something Kevin Smith brought up because Kevin Smith did a little thing about oh, it. Oh yes, what did he say? He's really mean? excited about it. He was like, "No, fuck you guys. He's gonna fucking kill it because he loves this guy. Fucking loves Batman, and he's gonna he's not gonna try to fuck it up. Like he's right. really gonna try to do a fucking good job because he really respects the character." Which was like, okay, well, at least he understands the character mm. rather than some asshat who doesn't know anything about Batman who's like, whatever, who doesn't respect the idea of it. So yeah. do, you guys, do you guys know the urban legend story behind uh, the Green Lantern casting? 
No. I, I, I am assuming that this Ooh. is not true because it is too, like, perfect as a thing, <laughs> but I kind of love it just as a story. Ooh, the story <laughs> that went around the comic book store when the casting was happening Which, wait, Green might Lantern. not be true, but we're going to perpetuate it anyway. Yes. yes, just so you know, yes. legend. How, how did legend. Ryan Reynolds get it? <laughs> well, apparently, uh, Ryan Reynolds, uh, being a huge comic book fan, as I think has been fairly well attested in various places, mm-hmm. like... Um, Because there was the whole thing that everyone was like, well, he should play Flash. And apparently he agrees. Like, he would love to play Flash, and that would have been natural and all this. But the story was that it got down to three people, and they let him know that it was him, Bradley Cooper, and Justin Timberlake. And according to the story, Ryan Reynolds was like, oh, fuck it. Tell them I'll say yes. (laughs) Wow. Is there a Hollywood Illuminati? Like, why are certain people like that just keep getting roles? I don't. Well, I think it's hard to find a guy with really good abs who can also act or something. And Jesus, (laughs) but those abs is really booked up right now. He's so booked. Um, Which is also like that. That movie was not exactly the complete disaster that it sounded like. Luckily, I'd heard so many bad things by the time I saw it that I was like, oh. Lowered expectations. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, lowered expectations can actually work out for you sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But it's so, I, I don't know. And and again, I, I, I kind of feel bad now that I bad mouth. Like, maybe both of those gentlemen would have really enjoyed doing right. the part. But, like, as a story on its own, I always love that as an idea of just being like, nope, I gotta, I gotta have do the to best do I can. I gotta, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. I mean, if that's the case, I would have to give him a high five. I would. <laughs> Well, okay, Amy, how do you feel about Batfleck? Are you down for the Batfleck? I Are you... don't know how to feel exactly. It's weird that it's it's a sort of an odd move for him because he's been so successfully establishing himself as, as a kind of an A-list director. Which is something right. I wanted to talk mm-hmm. about because I think that's the, the real yes. shame in this. Yeah. But exactly. somebody else said that they might yeah. have been like, oh, do this, and then you can direct one of the movies. There yeah, that's what I back, heard, too. There might be a back-end deal. There yeah. really might be, like, and in Hollywood, so we're giving you JLA. Right. <laughs> like, which would be really cool. But like I said, I think, I agree. I think the, the real travesty in this whole thing is, if they announced him as the director, I would have been like, you brave and you bold bastards. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Right. And like, and, like right. And, and slow clap and just, yeah. and, but, because and, I think as a director, he set himself up. He's amazing as a director. Definitely. A hundred percent. Like, and, and, you know, he's a smart guy. Like, obviously, if you can direct a really good film, like, you're not retarded. Like, you've got something going on mm-hmm. in, upstairs. Um, and I don't know. It's it's interesting. It's interesting. You know, I'd much rather see him direct it than than be it. But right, you it's know. a little like I, I have mixed feelings on Zack Snyder. So it's a little weird Ugh. to think about Zack Snyder <laughs> directing <laughs> him in it. Isn't it? That's what's strange. That's like, what I've been you're saying. gonna yeah. take direction from, from him from on this, this particular goof project. Nugget. Like <laughs> you know, Zack Snyder. Sorry, I just, I, I've never. Whose strength is not him. exactly working with actors. Like if, yes, if you 100%. can walk in there and just. Be he's awesome he, without any help, then you will do a great performance yeah. in a Zack Snyder movie. And maybe Affleck is at the point, I mean, because he can direct himself, I guess, right? Very maybe, well. Yeah, like, there's no thing in that, too, because maybe he can save Zack Snyder's poor directing by directing himself, <laughs> you know, or whatever. And also, too, Kevin Smith brought maybe up... Maybe give him more than 15 lines in the whole movie. Right, 100%. <laughs> um, Jesus Christ, the Superman movie. Whatever, moving on. Um, we just because we mentioned it, there's going to be YouTube comments. I know. Just because we mentioned it. Uh, stop talking about that. I know. We got to just oh just have a rule. Uh, oh, did you see the great uh, Patton Oswalt post on, on Batfleck? No. What did he I say? I thought this was very cool. Uh, it was a sort of a, a plea for reason in the face of the outrage. Nice. Um, nice. And essentially, he made this case where he's kind of like, so sort of addressing the people whose instinctive reaction was like vitriol and yeah. like craziness uh he was kind of like what would how does it not make sense to cast someone as batman who has already been like on top of the world and then under it yeah like who's already been sort of crushed and humiliated in the public eye which may or may not be an exaggeration depending on where you stand on like but, what his yeah, career prospects yeah. but he's kind of like but someone who's been he's been really on the top and he's been humbled and he's built himself back up and he basically did. mountains of tibet style yeah and just yeah. been like i'm gonna reinvent myself as a crazy and badass. he literally did it on his own he really did yeah. remake himself and yeah. build himself back up and he's yeah. clearly a man of a ton of different talents like in it's he's he's sort of a weirdly good fit in some of those ways if yeah. you look at his narrative which is mostly honestly what we're responding to is his narrative more than whether he's gonna do like a great well, wait a minute. choice where, where are you saying that his career went wrong in geely that ruined the whole and, thing. And well, no, that was the good part. 
That's a joke. <laughs> Just so everyone knows. I never saw Julie. Maybe you loved it. <laughs> it might have been. I am terrible. I haven't seen it either. I, I just. Uh, yeah, but no, yeah, yeah, he had a string of. known as being the worst movie. He had a that string of failures. Well, I think, I think, especially because he made decisions in his public life yeah, that were so publicly thing. put yeah. out there. It's like, it, it, I think it's well, kind of funny. Well, you know, that... Daredevil was not well received. Yeah. For, for reasons that had a lot to do with the movie. Yeah. Not being not... awesome. Well, it wasn't ready. I mean, it yeah. just wasn't up to par yet. I mean, they were still trying to figure out what they were doing with everything. They still weren't quite taking it seriously enough. They still yeah. were, like, being very, I don't know, it was bizarre. They were Fox. I think they were a little. They were Fox. <laughs> yeah, that's got a lot to do with it. They were Fox. <laughs> but, I mean, like, Daredevil, they were way too liberal with, like, that. we'll just change this, change this, and change that. Yeah. And it's going to yeah. be fine because oh, people God. don't I mean, really care like, about superhero films. And we went, what? How do you fuck up Electra? You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, God. I still haven't like, seen it. I'm oh, scared don't. to... Don't. Don't. No, you're don't. fine. <laughs> like, you're, you're fine. You're off the hook on that one. You're totally fine. Um, but, uh, yeah, Tyson, you had... What did you say about... You had something really funny to say about... Oh, yeah. No, I, have no, no idea. I do remember. I do remember. Uh, you were telling me that you felt like Ben Affleck is probably thanking his lucky fucking stars that Miley Cyrus came out on that fucking VMA <laughs> shit. So everyone just started talking about that right. instead and deflected all of the internet the rage. for three days and it would have kept and, going. Yeah, yeah. Like, until... Until the movie came out, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's yeah. true. But we but, all just learned like, to accept that yeah. because in the face of, yeah. But then, and then again, it's like Heath Ledger. I was like, what the fuck? You know, Anne Hathaway. Oh, I was like, I was what on, the fuck? And they all did a good yeah. job. So it's like, I can't say for a fact, no, oh, this fuck this guy. I think this is bigger than all of those, though. I think this is like the biggest, most yeah. controversial casting of all time. Well. <laughs> no? Here's, here's the honest to God truth. If this guy comes out and just kills it as Batman... I think collectively as The whole people, internet will acknowledge it was wrong. Yeah, yeah. I think collectively, <laughs> we all have to publicly go, wow, and he is actually legally allowed to flip off the camera on national television. Well, I, I, feel, like, I, I just yeah. think that just like, here's a big middle finger and well, yeah. that's I win. Lead me up to my next question <laughs> and that's awesome. How do you think that Ben Affleck feels about all this? Do his feelings are hurt? I wonder if I he... I don't think he's surprised. Hurt, well, the internet, I mean... But that's the thing. If he stays away from the internet, he's cool. But if he's reading the internet stuff, then he'll probably be like, God damn it. You know? But that's yeah. the thing, too. It's like, you know, internet people, they're always up your ass about something. It doesn't matter what you do. You're going to bum everyone out. You know what I'm saying? Like, someone's going to fucking talk shit that's about true, you. So it's but, like... Uh, this made national news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is this yeah. Went beyond the internet. I, I like, think the he, internet really you know, did, like, wipe its like, hands of the situation going, it's he, all yours, guys. I definitely, yeah. I definitely think it has definitely challenged him to where he's like, I have got to nail this. And if I don't, I'm going to be crucified. But so I feel he like knows he definitely, what the stakes are. He knew that are. going in. Like, I he's so. he's friends with... And, and this was, I, I think, a thing that, like, I want to know what it was like to be in Kevin Smith's house when he found out that this was going to happen. Yeah. And that, like, his long-term friend who played a comic book creator in Chasing Amy, mm -hmm. like, back in the day, is freaking Batman. Yeah. Yeah, like, he's very excited. That's, yeah. I mean, uh, for that alone, like, I want it to be great. I want it to work well. I want it to be awesome. And I want us all to be yeah. like, huh, you well, know? No. My, my big problem, my big problem isn't with Batfleck. My big problem was, again, Zack Snyder. <laughs> like, if it if it was somebody else besides Zack Snyder, I'd be more whatever. Like, he's the person I got a fucking okay, problem well, with. Okay, well, we can't go there anymore. <laughs> overstated our welcome on Zack Snyder. All right, all right, moving on. All right, moving on. Let's all talk about World's End. So, World's End. Have you seen it? Has anyone seen it? Uh, yes. Kirk has seen it. I have seen it. I have not exactly seen it yet. I'm very uh, excited to. You've got to see it. It's the best movie of the year. It, you know, like, I'm telling you, this summer has just been fraught with shitty fucking writing. I mean, it's just, like, people don't know what the fuck they're doing. It's just, like, a pissing contest of seeing, like, who's fucking stupid visual effects going to outdo somebody else's fucking... Blah. And it's like, who cares? And it's like, oh, the world's ending. Oh. And this is also the world ending. But And I think that it's doing itself a disservice because there's been so many movies about the well, world ending. Well, I talked ending. about this last time. It's like, how many movies that came out this summer that were like, and then the world's going to end well, unless we can fix <laughs> okay, like I've, every I've, movie this I've, summer. It's very inconvenient timing for a title. Yeah. 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 Yes. It had everything going against it just yeah. for the title alone. I've, I've got an interesting, weird, you know, I'm into weird shit. Uh, right, no. right yes. now, Saturn is in Scorpio, which is all about death, world ending. And you see, there's two comics with death as the lead character coming out. Like you have East of West, and then you also right. have Pretty Deadly coming mm. out. Then there's also all these movies about the world ending. Like I think that the cosmos is influencing like all these writers and shit like that. But whatever. I'm not uh, saying this is the last podcast that we're gonna do, right? <laughs> no. Okay, it's just checking. Not. Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. 
But yeah, Ben Affleck got got cast as Batman. And the I mean, world is things ending. are being influenced. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Uh, but yeah, World's End was really the writing was just that's what really got me was the writing was so solid, so smart, everything tied up together. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's even a joke in the beginning where they stop and they're looking over the town. It's okay. It's not a super spoiler. Okay, cool. Sorry. Uh, it's not like a story spoiler. Um, I may have had my hands over here. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, so they're they're getting ready to go to this town to do this drinking deal, and they look over the town, and Simon Pegg's like, you know, look at the town in its natural colors because tonight we're going to paint it red, you know. Aww. And then at the very end, they end up in the same spot, and then the town is it's like literally <laughs> painted red, like painted red, and they don't even bring it back up. But it's such a good like if you're paying attention, that's such a fun oh, little joke. Edgar Wright, and he's so talented in that <laughs> way, especially that because this is part of their their trilogy, mm, and it definitely right. is a familiar universe. Yeah. And so even though it's different, it's the same actors playing different characters. Yeah. All three films, according also with Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead, mm-hmm. are all very familiar. And yeah. one of the beauty is that he connects the films through visual sight gags. Yeah. Oh, there's so, so many good visual so gags. So it's it's almost like a little wink and nudge to like the fans because yeah. it's it by itself it's a really fun uh, joke. It was, yeah. that was oh that was funny. The fat guy fell down. Mm. But, but yeah, him, also him, realized, him falling over the fucking fence. Like, but, but that's oh, a little Simon nudge Peg, to like, like, hey guys, thanks Sean for coming along dead. for the ride with yeah. us. That's amazing. Like, thanks for bringing us along. Yeah, there's so much for forethought that's gone into it that yeah. you can tell. And I love in this one too that Simon Pegg is the fuck up and that Nick Frost is the okay, fucking how great straight was Nick man. Frost? He was so good, dude. It was such a fun like mix up. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, it was good. Yeah, Nick Frost actually really sh- has been showing off his own acting skills. I oh, hope he yeah. gets more gigs from this. Oh, totally, I really do. Totally. He's very underrated. Like, I know Simon Pegg has gone on to do a little bit more stuff, even though it's not right. that much, you know, more. Right. Um, Did you, are you see him on are Black you Books? Guys, a guide or a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy fans. Uh, mm-hmm. Did the end of the movie feel like it totally had that vibe to it? Wait, I haven't seen the, the, that movie in so long. Like, I haven't seen it. Uh, was like college. It was the last time I saw it. It really does have that tongue-in-cheek British, like, sci-fi I'm, humor this moment. This is the best thing that you could be saying. I yeah. love, so exciting. I love it, British it, humor. I love you British people. I do. I, I want to come over uh, here British and English, I don't. I, I insulted tea. somebody across the way when I said the wrong terminology. And they're, I'm going to get on the uh, YouTube sure. comments. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> but the, the the film at the end really does have this really great, sweet Hitchhiker's Guide like yeah, vibe to yeah. it. And Aww. yeah, exa- you guys exactly. Know there's there's the, a whole lot of awes and oohs with this the, movie. the radio show for Hitchhikers that the whole thing started at, like it blew my mind when I learned this. Like originally the radio show was just going to be called The Ends of the Earth and the planet was going to be destroyed in every episode in a different mm-hmm. way. <laughs> <laughs> Hitchhikers is literally just the first episode yeah. that got out of control. They were, yeah, it was just, just their first going. random scenario, and they were like, oh, this is fun, and they just kept going for, like, 40 years. Oh, <laughs> like, awesome. It's amazing, and that's why they were like, yeah, yeah, the first one is it gets demolished for an inter- hyperspace bypass. Right. Like, that would right. be hilarious, right. and, mm-hmm. like, thus an empire was born. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So it, when you say that it sounds like, it, it feels like Hitchhikers, it could literally be, like, maybe this could have been another episode yeah. of I'm the so end of the said Earth. It. Yes, I bet you that's totally the vibe, oh, that's the vibe I got yeah. from it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it was so good. Um, well, wait. I wanted yeah. to ask you because you've seen all of the yeah. movies. How does this one compare to the rest of their films? Wow. Okay. Uh, I love <laughs> Shaun of the Dead. Right. Right when I walked out of the theater, I oh, wanted to yeah. watch it Shaun again. Oh yeah, Shaun of the Dead. Hot was... Fuzz took me by surprise because I saw it the first time. It's like I'm not sure if I really like that. Mm. Yeah, and Hot then, Fuzz took a little bit of one. Yeah, and then too. Uh, Hot Fuzz was that movie where mm. on repeated viewings, I went, "This is genius." Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So when I walked out of this one, it was like, no, you don't need to convince me of anything. This this well, movie is again, just on par I mean, with for those. Me, They're that good. For me personally, and I've been reading some comments and people are like, I didn't like that movie. I didn't like that movie. Blah, blah, blah. blah. I guess something's wrong with me. But it's like, I've watched so many movies this summer. Like, I've watched more movies than the average person. And I've seen so many shit movies that have terrible writing where people don't know what the fuck they're doing. And it's just a mess. And this was just, like, it was so nice to see a fucking coherent film. And on top of that, it also, for me personally, like, I know people that kind of resemble, like, Gary King in a way. Where they're, like, stuck in the past and they're kind of retarded and they're crazy. maybe that's what matters is you need some sort of relatability. Yeah. For us, we were like... That guy's just like someone and, we know. And the yeah. beginning of the film does like the way his character is and the way his character's thinking is. 
Yeah. Like, Ugh. it kind of hit close to home for me. I'm like, oh, God, I hope I'm not this guy. <laughs> like, oh, man. No. Like, I wasn't yeah. supposed to be having those feels during, like, an Edgar Wright film. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, no. all Edgar but, Wright films are about secret feels. Yeah, Like, that's is. the thing. You're I mean, like, I'm like, going to watch something fun. Oh, my God, my heart. Yeah, yeah. especially, like, Scott Pilgrim takes me oh. on a roller coaster every time. Oh, my like, God, that's one Scott Pilgrim is so films. fucking solid, dude. Yeah. It's such it's a just... solid film. And you were saying you were reading something about oh. Edgar Wright or... or um, yeah, something. I... I Because he shows up at a lot of screenings and things in the Los Angeles area, so mm-hmm. I've actually gotten to hear him talk a couple times, usually oh, while so seeing awesome. Scott Pilgrim at midnight somewhere. <laughs> um, and what's great is that he's... He's so good natured and he's so intelligent. And that kind of the sight gag thing, like the level of affection for the fans and for movie making and for mm-hmm. everything, like it just rolls off of him all the time. Uh, and so we were talking earlier about like being shamed, where like I haven't seen World's End yet or certain other like yeah. really. Movies that will remain certain, nameless yeah, that we discovered that about beat, earlier today. I, there's certain staples of 80s cinema that I probably should see at some point. Um, but there was a, <laughs> this awesome point that he made live at one of those where he was talking about some film he loved. But he was like, and if you haven't seen it, that's okay, because there is no such thing as being late to the party. And yeah. it was the oh, sweetest, man. most oh, cool. gentlemanly thing, and I've kind of stolen it for like my vlog and for everything else. But where it's like, great. there is no wrong time to fall in love with something. There right. isn't. There really is. That isn't. being said, I really like, need to see I didn't end, appreciate. But. Absolutely. Like, there's a lot of things that I didn't appreciate at the time that I've rewatched now that I appreciate. There's all sorts of stuff that I haven't seen that I know that I'm going to love, mm-hmm. but I just, it's not the right well, time for me, and I know that I need to wait for it. You know, I mean, it's okay. Yeah, like when, when you get down to brass tacks, how boring would life be if you actually dude, did know everything about everything? Can I make, the best uh, thing about geek culture confession? and nerd culture is that there's always going to be something that we're going to learn about. There's always yeah, something no, that and, and you get to share ideas with friends. And that's something you know? that I loved about your blog or your vlog, Amy. <laughs> I know it's like, vlog, whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's is that you know you said that there's so much in comics that's like nobody knows everything. Mm, you know, right. and it's like people get intimidated because like, oh, I don't know anything. Well, it's like, well, I don't fucking know everything. Right, that makes you just you know, like the like, rest of Kirk us. Kirk doesn't like, know everything. Amy doesn't know everything. Like, we all know what we know. Which, by the way, and everyone can okay. agree about on the YouTube comments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the one thing that's going to unite everybody. You guys, you don't, guys know don't know everything. everything. Yeah. Well, well it's true. you're right. It is, yeah. yeah, you're 100% <laughs> right. Only the assholes don't. on the internet know everything. Yeah, that's apparently. Um, Actually, but I am going to embarrass Amy. Read her YouTube comments. <laughs> she has the nicest Man. people it's, and the nicest comments. And you're so nice. Like, well, we've got to like, do something about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, oh, God. yeah, we're going to, we can Please. start like some fake yeah, accounts I'm later. Let's send, your, let's no, send some of our viewers over to yours. Away missions of, of <laughs> trolls to my comments. No, like, that's, that's okay. That's no, but no, seriously, that's like, your, your comment section might save the internet from itself. <laughs> but that, but that's like, a, it might. This is the thing, though. It's like you, you have this very. Like, what were you saying? Like, almost like a history teacher type <laughs> vibe that's, like, super cute. I can't cute. turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so cute. And it's like, I can't imagine anyone being mean to you. It's like, I can imagine people being mean to me because I, like, curse and I say fuck and, like, I'm mean sometimes and whatever. But it's like, you're so sweet and nice and awesome and knowledgeable that it's like, who's going to be mean to you? Well, I honestly don't really get how people are mean to you either. Uh, like, they it's are. just one of those <laughs> mysteries of the internet. And I was sort of bracing myself for it when we launched. Yeah. But I, I have been super lucky so far. I think it's a lot of, if, if anyone listening to this is a geek and sundry, you guys are just like, you know, smarter and more polite than most people. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, and, that, and that's the thing too. It's like, you know, you, you really do focus on comics. And I feel like the comic book crowd is, you know, like nicer and cooler than a lot of people would think. Like everybody that I know that likes comics, there's very few people I know that are like total dicks. That like comics. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're generally it's kind weird of weird because we we, yeah. so, we have both reputations kind of simultaneously. But I think it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like we're full of dicks, but we're also full of really nice people. It's like, but it's because it's we're so tiny and we're like, oh, anyone else talking about comics. Yeah. This is cool. And yeah. usually that impulse and will outweigh the It other. really is these dicks that do like they never leave their basement. Yeah. Aww. Like they really have been shut off from the well, rest of the world. And like, well, it's like come out to the sun. I mean, I know I hate sunlight too, but <laughs> like come out to the light because it's actually kind of fun yeah. when you get out in some fresh air and you don't it's necessarily good. hide well, yeah. behind I mean, your keyboard lot, all day. A, a lot, I feel like a lot you know. of people who yeah. leave miserable comments are miserable people, you know, right. and generally yeah. speaking. Yeah. But, you know. If they weren't trolling us, they'd be trolling like Gawker. They're going to troll somebody. Something to hate somewhere. They're like, angry. All right, let's stop before I'm okay. offended. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. All right, let's move on to Batwoman. Okay, so Speaking big news. Speaking of hating things. Yeah, big news. <sighs> J.H. Williams III, who's been working on Batwoman, which is a, a fucking award-winning acclaimed series. It's fucking fantastic. It's awesome. Uh, he has left the title, him and his creative team, uh, because of creative differences within editorial, because they would not allow them to marry two lesbian characters 
within their series. Uh, Kathy or Kate Kane, Kathy Kane, Kane. Uh, and, and, uh, and Maggie Sawyer. Maggie Sawyer. Now, to be fair, because I am going to go. Please do. Quid, you know, we like to be DC fair. DC is now saying that it's because they are uncomfortable with marrying their superheroes because it makes it harder for the writers to write the stories. Which, well, by the way, I'm calling complete BS on. Well, who else is writing the fucking stories, by the way? <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. So, you, you have, I mean... And let's let's divorce. The outset, people get divorces let's, all the time. Write a divorce. That'd be great. Like, Let, let's also <laughs> say at the outset that there are other changes that they asked, let, that, there, that they were yes. objecting yeah. to at the same time. Like I said, but it's I all keep this, of a package. It's all of a thoughtless I want to keep this thing kind of as fair as possible. Let's put all the info out there. Yes, just that it is all of a of a crazy thoughtless yeah. piece but right. the fact that there are other problems does not erase the fact that this is a huge problem well the, so, yeah they were they were saying that you were telling me kirk that they had laid out their entire deal to dc editorial said this mm-hmm. is what we're planning on doing they've been like, okay whatever whatever and then by the time they got to the to the big stuff right. all of a sudden dc editorial was like you can't marry them you got to change this you got to change this other thing you got to change this other thing at 11th hour bullshit and the and, proposal has already happened so it's a little late and to- if i'm correct the proposals <laughs> happened twice in the comic. <laughs> yeah. Like, like the, the Kathy Kane character's been like, no, seriously, bitch, I want to marry you. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, it's been very, very put out there. Yeah. And um, like I said, I think DC didn't know what they were dealing with and because they mm. were so absent-minded about the situation. Hey, you've got this amazing creative team that's going to come in, bring this awesome Bat character out. Mm-hmm. And it's like, all right, we want Batwoman. And DC's like, well, no one's doing anything with her. Fine. Yeah. Hey, cool. We're going to make her gay. Um, well, yeah, no, you know, that's fine. That's cool, too. Whatever. All right. She's also going to be the one in the Bat family that fights the supernatural. And then things started to get hairy. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. now DC's like, well, that doesn't necessarily fit the mold of the rest of the Bat family. We don't family. know what to do with creative things. Yeah. <laughs> like, we have this really good idea, so we're not going to let it touch any of the other Bat titles. Yeah, because she was well, not in Batman no. Incorporated. She she turned down Batman Incorporated, so she's not included in any of the other Bat titles. Yeah. Um, which I don't family, necessarily not mind. Not. Uh, you know, I like ne- I, I think it's cool that she can be her own thing. She's strong enough to Absolutely. carry her own thing. Um, but it is odd that they don't include her in any of the bat stuff. It's but... interesting that the changes that have and haven't been made, because this is one of the only titles that was already in the works before New 52. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it kept getting delayed and delayed, and we were all like, when is it happening? And so they timed it with the New 52, and then just sort of didn't change anything for the reboot, which was sort of hilarious. Yeah. Um, which is great, because there, I mean, she doesn't, the, the modern version of Batwoman doesn't have that much history. You basically, right. you could read 52 and pick up the Elegy trade by a J. H. Williams and Greg oh, Rucka, which is totally pick up Elegy, good. totally pick it up. So it was, I mean, it was a little scary going to New 52 because Greg Rucka had left, and so yeah. there was some questions about, like, I, I still love the book. I, I find the, the plotting isn't necessarily quite as tight as it was before. But yeah. now that I hear about them, like, if you change stories at the last minute, of course the plotting's not going to be that and, tight. And like, it's a shame. It's a shame because we, we were making jokes about Twitter before. But if you go back and you look at their Twitter feed from the last two to three mm. weeks, you can definitely <laughs> point out where he's being ambiguous. But, like, he just got the phone call from ed- DC Editorial and oh. he's just like, With well, J.H. Williams? Yeah. Yeah. And he literally was like, well, I guess it's screw with J.H. week. Like, you can start, you can like, if you go okay. back and look at his Twitter feed, it Again. really is this, like, the footprints leading up to, I fuck keep, it, I'm I out. keep asking this yeah. question, uh, what the fuck is going on with DC? Like, what the I, fuck are they doing? They're I dropping knew. the ball. Like, they just need to just raise the fields and start all over or some shit. I guess. You know, which is, the, they already um, just did that. incident like this yeah. is really... How many creative teams has and, Green and, and, Arrow and, gone through? Oh, my God. And who's a... Who and, can, and again, who, again, Who's so offended by a lesbian wedding? Who cares? Who cares? Right. Let him fucking marry. Who fucking cares? Like, nobody cares. Or if you have that policy, have it from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, it's yeah. like, yeah. if you're really like, nobody gets married, then... then. And, and here's my frustration. I kind of... this is why And you're, and you're telling me no yeah. superheroes would ever get married? Like, fuck you. Like, 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 and by the way, you can totally tell great stories with married superheroes. Of course. Look at anything Mark Wade did during his DC run on Flash. Mm-hmm. Like, he started injecting those stories with Wally West with things that were going on in his real life. Yeah. And now you're having Wally being a superhero, well, dealing I, again, with Barry coming back and I, handling marriage. I keep saying this yeah. so many times. You know? It's like, the reason why I read a lot of superhero stories is for the soft stories. Like, oh. I love the stories about their lives and what they're doing when they're not fighting crime. Like, yeah. they're such interesting characters to me, you know? I mean, and it's, That's why we're Marvel see, girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. And I don't see Sue and Richard Storm getting divorced anytime soon. So yeah, don't tell me that these characters yeah. can't get married. Yeah, don't, yeah. don't, like, that's a bullshit fucking, I don't know. And like I said, again, putting all the stuff out there, maybe it isn't the gay marriage thing, maybe it was a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, I but mean, But for yeah. me, personally, 
again, geek culture, comics, mm-hmm. all that stuff that I discovered growing up, mm-hmm. it was inclusive, and it didn't matter what my life was. Right. And being, well, you know... I mean, comics... I feel like this sends the wrong message to those people. Exactly. Like, well, really, comics really have does. always yeah. appealed to outsiders. You know, that's why I got into it. I'm sure that's why you guys got into yeah. it, because it's like yeah. you don't feel like you're part of the mainstream, and, you know, these things speak to you. And then when they... When they're like, oh, we're anti-gay. It's like, what? Right. Like, they're fucking outsiders. Like, they don't even have fucking civil rights. Like, yeah. fuck you. Like, let them fucking get, like, gay and characters get like, married. The, this book Christ existing sake. at all seems to be sort of an accident of, of DC yeah. planning where, like, right. I, 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 I can't confirm this necessarily but like supposedly the the Greg Rucka J. Williams run on Detective was just some like a story they had sitting around where they didn't really have a place for it (laughs) and they were kind of like oh we should probably try to turn these into money in some way so I guess we'll let her take over Detective for a couple issues and that blew my mind because I was like did you so somebody just didn't know what they had yeah. And it makes, that's the disconnect and, over there is like, I don't know if they're reading their own comics. I don't think they I don't do. know if they, I don't think I they mean, are. I'm sure there there are really great people who work over there. I'm but sure there I, are. But all, I don't know what's going on. It's a there, bunch of great people that work over there with dicks for bosses. But there's a sure. mass exodus. I, I mean, whether you want to admit it or not, there is an exodus of editors, of writers, of artists. Yeah. Like, people are leaving. Oh, and then Didio gets on Twitter and says, two years is a good run. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. you just hit all of comics history in the face. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's crazy. Like, I just, it just feels like there needs to be a regime change. There just needs to be a regime change. That's all there is to it. Uh, and it's unfortunate because it's like, I would really like to see DC modernize and 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 make it happen, and they could. Yeah. I feel like it's it's the right time. Like things are changing. Now's the time to start changing it up, and they're just pussies. Okay, well let's end on that because I don't want to do too much negativity. I like ending on that, by the way. <laughs> Nailed it. Because you said that's all there is to it. Uh, and next, Marvel yeah. Infinity versus Battle of the Atom. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. All right. Happier news. So. <laughs> Over at Marvel, yeah. where things are kind of going right in a lot of ways. Uh, although, you know, we still got beef with Marvel. You know, we still got beef with them. And one of my we beefs do. is, is that, well... Not, not enough we, X-Men? We have, <laughs> we have two fucking uh, events, Marvel events going on right now. We have Infinity, which is the Avengers event uh, with mm. Hickman. And then we also have, on the X-Men front, Battle of the Atom. And for me personally, I don't really think that I could do two events at once. Mm. I can do one or the other. And of course, I'm X-Men girl. I know, Amy, you're uh, all about that's it. That's the way I swing as well. So, you know, <laughs> we're going to go with Battle of the Atom, uh, personally. Uh, but I love Hickman! You, yeah, I know. I, it's, here's the hard part. I agree with you guys, but I feel like I have to like defend him because no one else is going to. Well, right no, because he's amazing. And it's like, even if it doesn't make sense, it will eventually, and your mind yeah. will blow open. Yeah. Like, yeah. I guess he's my Morrison in that way, where... I've just like after Fantastic Four and after Secret Warriors and after like for some reason the one of his nightly new like my freaking mind. and that really one was amazing. just like just yeah. stick with it and the wheels within the wheels will yeah. like all come together yeah. into so my problem with the two events is strictly of the is it too much of a good thing yeah like because I just don't know like working at the store trying to explain stuff to people and watching their eyes glaze over you kind of get this it very is. keen sense of like. Don't push it too far. Right. Like, I feel, yeah, right. I feel like I they're know. pushing it. I'm worried. And it's and it's hard because I I've run out of gas with Hickman as far as the mainstream mainstream mm. stuff yeah. that yeah. goes. Yeah. But like East of West is like my cocaine Dude, right now. East of West like, is so I'm good. waiting for the next issue and oh, I just yeah. take it and I just and I do it three more times. Like, oh my god. <laughs> East of West is amazing. So good. But I've fell off the Avengers. Mm, wagon yeah. about I fell six off of months it too, ago. And then I'm trying to do the Infinity thing. And there's all these characters he's introduced. Right. Hmm. And there's right. all these Grant. And like he's, yeah, a, he's an Ex-Nilo, idea machine. He is. He's, he's, Abyss. Yeah. He really is kind of like old school Lee in Kirby, which is right. the way that we talk. Yeah. Where he was just yeah, like, he's very where they were like, building. this issue we invented scrolls and we're moving on. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and people are going to spend the next four decades mining material out of that. And it gives yeah. you that sense, but it can sometimes be more dizzying like, than it is yeah, actually. Yeah, like, because you're never ever going to run out of ideas when it comes to the new gods. Like, there's still, <laughs> right. like, Marvel is always oh. going to be, like, rocking that stuff. Yeah. But. The, or DC. Or DC, excuse yeah. me. Beer number three. Um, <laughs> I thought I was crazy for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, that's okay. But, no, but but yeah, I mean, it's like when you're, but you're reading, you know, X-Men Battle of the Atom and you have like, you know, the story that goes through different arcs, but then you also have Infinity that you had to read this and this and this and this. And it's like, 
it seems a little cash grabby at times, yes. which I n- I never like that. Like the fucking DC villains cash grab is bullshit uh, too. You know, like and there, it's like feels like two cash grabs on both fronts are happening, and it's just like no, like I can only do one cash grab, and Battle of the Atom is it for me. Yeah, well, can I randomly were cool though? I guess. I mean, <laughs> who, the, who the fuck is this Joker's daughter bullshit? Talia didn't even get a fucking villains thing, so fuck that shit. Uh, oh, that's a slap in the face. Raza did, me. but Talia Raza? didn't. Yeah. Mm. It's like, come on, Talia, she fucking, she fucking killed her own fucking son. Like, you're not going to give her a fucking villain's thing, or you're going to give it to some yeah, fucking frost bitch? Like, like, who cares? Can we just talk about the fact that 19 is still not over Damien's death? I'm not. Aww. And I never will be. Aww. I loved him. I'm really not. But... I, it makes me want to have a son and dress him up like Damien, and <laughs> I'll be Talia, I, and I won't kill that's, him. Okay. That's... <laughs> it makes me want to do all the horrible things that led to <laughs> ruining this child's life. Um, I know, right? <laughs> Poor kid. And now this uh, is another argument because Bendis, for as long as he's been, especially going back to his Avengers run, mm. was it me or did Bendis have the really big, great ideas, but he was a little bit better at the long play hmm. than maybe Hickman is? Because I, I, Hickman well, has I, these really I, great I, big ideas. But the ideas are so big that they, yeah, it takes a long time for them to get the perspective on it. And maybe it. they're not giving them enough time yeah. to get these ideas right. out. Right. I guess. Like, yeah. I've got a three year run. Well, you've got 12 issues. Yeah. Like, okay, right. I could see that. You know? Yeah, and I feel it like. Might, how much of it is. I'm curious, like, what would it be like if they weren't double shipping? Would it be even worse? Because we'd get one random story we kind of don't understand, and then a month later another random story we kind of don't understand? Or is the overwhelming thing being contributed to by the fact that the book started in, like, January, and it's on issue 19 or something? Mm -hmm. I might be exaggerating, but not by much. No, it is is definitely, like... I, I don't even know how they're putting this really this much shit it. out. Like it's it, it throws me off it's, as a reader. Where they're I'm they're like, really messing with my sense of numbers. Like I love you, Marvel, <laughs> but the one thing DC's doing okay on is I can tell what month it is most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that guy is okay. doing his job over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, and on a completely superficial note for the crossovers, I just want to give some love to the color coding. The thing yeah. that's going on over at oh, Marvel yeah, with, like... Stone. Yeah, well, yeah. like... Cause, and, and their overall... I, I don't know. Somebody was saying that uh, AVX was I, supposedly the first crossover to really bear the mark of Axel Alonso being in charge. Yeah. Um, and it was funny because it did feel sort of better organized than some of the previous ones, even though a lot of it was literally yeah. sort of the same. Right. Uh, and, and in that sense, like... All, the red banners at the bottom of all the Marvel Now yeah. titles gave way to blue banners for the Infinity tie-ins for the first one. Right. Um, and I think they're still blue. And X-Men Battle for the Atom is yellow. And I know that's a silly thing, but, but I stare helps. at people trying to make sense out of these covers no, all day I long. I was trying to make sense of them because I, mm. I went on vacation for like two and a half weeks. So I come back. I mean, I literally have a month of Don't comics. Don't say vacation. It wasn't vacation. It wasn't. I worked the whole fucking time and everyone Aww. thinks that I was blowing all my fucking Kickstarter money on partying when I'm fucking working the entire fucking time. <laughs> Fuck Aww. you. Um, but anyways. Hey, uh, man, you need another beer? You good? Uh, I need to go pee and then another okay. beer. All right, just uh, <laughs> but Battle of the Atom, though, it was very easy for me to figure it out. Mm. Like, I went in. There's, uh, here's part you know, one, here's, part, here's two, part, part one, three. part two, part three. Now, part three is in adjectiveless X-Men. <laughs> you know, part two is in all new X-Men. Part one is also an adjectiveless S- X-Men. So um, but it's this, easy to deal uh, yeah. with. Like, it wasn't a headache, and I could easily figure it out, and I really did appreciate that for sure. It's a similar structure because to, to Second Coming and other ones like that, and it still can be a little, like, if you're only reading one or the other of these X-Books, then suddenly it's like, well, you yeah. need these two bookend issues, and then it's going to run through the others. Right. right. But on the whole, they're keeping it pretty self-contained. Yeah, it's and, done and two months, and then we should be done. And it's right. It's not like an AVX situation <laughs> where it's like retarded, like everyone's involved. You know, it, it and, it, and I do like that. You know, it. I don't know. It is very self-contained, and there are a lot of X titles out right now. You know, and there's a lot of. I'm nodding. Wait, you can hear me. Sorry, nodding. Yes. 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. So, nodding enthusiastically. There's yeah. so many good X titles coming out right now. Um, there's, there's How do you ones. like Battle of the Atom? Because I, I just sat I down and caught it. up on several. It's, and it's so good. It's so good. I'm it's, also I'm having fun watching uh, Brian Wood in his first forte. His like, I don't think he's ever done crossover stuff. Wow. So I was thinking about this. Oh. Brian Wood is now like. Yes. Collectively working with these other writers to tell the story. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of which, he works for every company and writes every kind of comic. And I, is he seven Star people? Star Wars. Like, yeah. His Star Wars is awesome. It's, yeah. That's it's what the, everyone says. 
That's well, so I awesome. I, I haven't been reading it, but I need to because somebody just sold me on it by being like, so it's the best Leia I've ever read Although, and it's the best Mon Mothma you yeah. will ever read. And I'm like, what? That's He's pulling awesome. characters out of nowhere. You're yeah. like, oh, now I really want to hear this backstory. Well, yeah, yeah. and you're like, He's well, you, yeah, logically you should have been a huge part of everything, but like, yeah, anyway. Yeah. And well, right, right, right. okay, so we're going to get into the State of the X-Men address now. Yes. Since, okay, so, <laughs> so, okay. Before we move on, Kirk, Infinity or Battle of the Atom? Which one are you in? I'm Battle of the Atom. Okay, I'm Battle of the Atom. And speaking of somebody who's Amy. a huge Thanos <laughs> fan, I'm Battle of the Atom. Yeah, see, yeah. that's a big thing. I don't mm. want to pick. They're pick. two different kinds of stories, Do it, and pick. I'm really excited for both of them. And Whatever. You like Battle I like of the Atom. Which, ch- of the which, child, <laughs> which child is your favorite? But Jim Chung is so pretty. Come on, Jim Chung. So pretty. <laughs> we're trying to get you some trolls. Come on. Yeah, we're, we're doing everything we can. It's just, I... I Battle of the Atoms yeah. is going to yes. be my pick. But I am very excited to then have more Infinity Read once it wraps up. Well, That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All, right. So, All right, so how about that X-Men State of the Union address? X-Men State of the Union. So there's a lot of really great X-Men stuff going on. Is this just where we squee about everything being awesome? Yes, yes. pretty much. <laughs> yes. Um, When's the last time we got to say that? Uh, you know what's uh, great? The X-Men books. Everything. Pretty everything. much everything. I mean, there's a there's a couple things, though. Like, Legion, I don't know if that's good or not. Some people have said it's it okay, I but it's... I tried a few of those. I didn't really get into it. There's a... The old Legacy was such an amazing rogue spotlight book that, mm-hmm. like, there's a couple titles like that where I'm still in mourning over the last version, and I haven't really checked out the new one yet, because right. I'm just right. like... But but Christos Gage was writing awesome rogue stuff, and now it's about Legion, which is probably cool. But it could be, but I, I don't know. I, I'm reading so many books that it's like I have to start curating and cutting back a lot of stuff because mm. I am reading so much that it's getting to a point where it's like, this isn't even fun anymore. I'm mm. just reading way too much shit. <laughs> but uh, Wolverine the X-Men I read on the regular. Uh, adjectiveless X-Men. That's just X-Men. Uh, I'm also reading. All new X-Men is fucking killing it. And it should be a train wreck, but instead it's amazing. No. Oh, awesome. and Uncanny X-Men, I'm reading that. Yeah. Uncanny X-Force, I think I might be cutting from the team. I'm not sure. Like I said, we're seven, eight issues into it, and they haven't actually come together as a team. Yeah, and then now they're teasing huh. with Spiral again. And it's like, fuck, I was getting ready to cut you, and now you're going to tell me Spiral's going to be in, and I really love Spiral, but yeah, like, I don't know. They've been really super vague about the overall all yeah the 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 it's, bear it's, spirit what the fuck is the remnants and stuff yeah. i don't get and it bishop has now shown up out of nowhere and it's like what are you gonna do with bishop is yeah. he a good guy or is he a bad guy yeah did he really shoot xavier in, in right. the face or no mm. that's right we, we undid all that yeah now <laughs> now xavier's dead again bishop didn't do it right Oh, but yeah. he's now got a cybernetic arm, so he's kind of like the evil cable. No, 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 no. Uh, We're going to make him good again. It's he confused. just needs help. It's a little weird. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know what to do with that. And Wolverine and the X-Men, uh, they just finished up with their Hellfire Saga. It was uh, so much fun. 35 yeah. is the last one that just came out, issue number 35. And yeah, the, the, the Hellfire Saga was so much fun. I thought it was like going to be kind of... I mean, it is goofy. It's, it's not... It's really goofy. It's really goofy, and that's why it's so good. Uh, yeah. in my opinion. Like, there's so many weird little moments, like that pandemonium guy with the demon hands, and then later on, oh, like, yeah. Wolverine <laughs> cuts off his demon hands, and then the demon hands are crawling towards him, like, we don't need a body to get you, and it's Which like, is so oh. evil dead, and I'm, I'm I know, it. I know, it's yeah. so much fun. Like, I can tell how much I love this book, because, like, one of those, you know how there's weird characters who you just adore? Mm. I love Mudbug, Husk. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Tyson Mudbug. T-Bone. Mudbug going to get his own spin-off series? T-Bone loves Mudbug. No, we should start the countdown for that. <laughs> but for me, one of them is a husk. Yeah. Uh, who has, you know, mostly not been doing much of anything for right. a long yeah. time. And, and, like, I know how much I love this book because I don't know what the good God is going on with her. And I don't, I'm just like, yep, cool, whatever. You'll explain just, it eventually. Just like, keep doing it. Um, it's amazing. You're a lunch lady? Okay. And for the first like, time you're ever, lunch lady. and for the first time ever, I care about Toad? Oh, oh my it's God. so what the like, hell, man? Oh my god, it's oh. so good. And then at the very, very end of the Hellfire <laughs> Saga, where they have a teaser of like possibly uh, Nightcrawler coming back, because the Bamps have been a thing where no one's really answered the question of where the Bamps, the little they're blue goblins, there. are they're coming just there, from. Infesting things. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, but they're a part of obviously Nightcrawler who's elsewhere, quote right. unquote. Yeah. Um, so that's a lot of fun. Kid Omega and ID just got together and hooked up with their boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> About it. I, don't love it. I no did not think way. they could ever make me like pro that just because I'm such a brew fan girl. Oh, but like, yeah. but they did. But oh. they were like, they made it so weird and natural and slow and like, it's yeah. just like, oh, well, well fine. Speaking like, of brew, I know. brew's back. 
Oh and my! He's no longer brain damaged. He's no longer brain damaged. He is. He is. He's now regaining his uh, psyche and is like talking and not just a crazy animal anymore. Yeah. And the whole thing has okay. happened at breakneck speed, so we're yeah. I'm hoping that there'll be some chances to go back and fill in because if you're feeling like, whoa, that all just happened, then that <laughs> sort of is how it felt. But like. It still was pretty excellently done. So yeah. I, oh, I and don't know. and I love some of the kids from the ex or the, the Hellfire Club <laughs> are now stuck in the Wolverine School or Jean Grey School for right. higher learning, and they're like, oh god, like anywhere else, like the Doctor yeah. Frankenstein kid and the other kid. Although Cade Kilgore is stuck in the Siege's Mirror, which what I don't even know what the fuck that shit is. Siege like, Perilous. Yeah, what the fuck is the Siege Perilous? I'm not sure, but I like it. Um, and I then do all the like the co- I to get the, into the this conversation, but really I'm the... having way more fun watching you guys oh, just go sorry. off right now. So I just I agree with everything. Go. But like the, the challenge of a book like this is the idea of I'm gonna make up a new version of the Hellfire Club that you're really gonna like and it's not gonna have much in common with the previous versions. Like yeah. it's tough to build an original set of villains in an oh, X-Men book in this day and age. Yeah. And like that's actually been secretly on and off with the with the crossovers coming and going. That's actually been what they've been doing the, the whole time on Wolverine and the X-Men. Yeah. And, like, one of my favorite things about Marvel now was that they knew what not to mess with. Mm-hmm. Like, they didn't end this one and give it a new number one because it was in the middle of doing its thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, was it hard right. to be like, everything's on number four except this one's on 27? Yeah, it made it confusing, but, like... They knew not to to, mess to with kill a, go- a thing that was working. And oh yeah! Thank you for saying that because I was wondering that. Yeah, because I think like with everything else, they moved the creative teams around. They mm-hmm. gave them new number ones, but this one, like yeah. as much as I'm looking forward to Jason Aaron having a new oh. X Men book in a couple months, this yeah. this one's. Oh what, wait! What is the new X Men book he has? The amazing X Men. Oh, I don't know. Who does it, yeah, what's who's all I know about amazing? it is the the highly spoilerific image that they put on the front of the solicit for it in, uh-huh. in the Diamond Previews catalog, which is an image of a certain. Surprise showing up guy at the end of this storyline. And I'm still kind of mad that I, I had the information that Nightcrawler might be coming back. Like, most right, of them, if you're reading right. the things, like... Yeah. So that's all I know about Amazing X-Men. Jason Aaron, um, Amazing X-Men, Nightcrawler. Let me let me just have one little fun fact in here about the Hellfire song mm, that I yes, really sorry. enjoyed. Fucking, uh... Iceman making a giant Iceman Voltron. Like an Iceman Voltron, <laughs> and on top of that, like full on Voltron controls. Like, yes, full on Voltron controls made out of ice. Like that are completely <laughs> superfluous. <laughs> It was so awesome. And it's so small. It's such a small little part of it, but it's such a fun fucking idea that I'm it just, just like... It just makes him like the kid from Galaxy Quest, but in his own mutant powers. Yes! Like, like <laughs> it's... It's... It's, uh. it's so much fun. Like, so, fuck you, Wolverine and the X-Men. It's still killing it. Um, Uncanny X-Men... I mean, they still have really? Fraser Irving on it, which I love. I thought yeah. that they were just going to have him. We keep for the, talking uh, about like how no, his that arc's over. I'm sure they yeah, can't the, use his art for anything else. Yeah, no, it's, they keep uh, using him, and it's beautiful. This one and Wolverine and the X Men are two examples where they've been balancing art teams that somehow, instead of being jarring and ruining everything, are working. Yeah, like yeah, definitely. I, I, it's Bradshaw on Wolverine and the X Men has become one of my favorite oh, dude, artists. Whereas originally so I thought I would just be like, you know, go to hell for not being Bachelor, and then I was like, wait, no, I love you. No, yeah. <laughs> I know. Like, like Bradshaw is like really killing it, and I love that in the fucking new Uncanny X Men, like Gold Balls is like <laughs> doing it, and he's like, it's like fucking, ex- I don't know, embrace like, yourself and yes. get a new name. There's a new mutant, by the way, named Gold Balls, and that's what he does. He has gold balls that plonk well, out of him. May- you might want to rephrase that. <laughs> well, not gold <laughs> testicles, gold. Literal balls <laughs> that fly it's out of she's, him. She's, no, wait, hold on. What do the, the balls do again? <laughs> they plonk out of him. <laughs> okay, okay. They, uh, she's making it's, movements it's, with her hands on her chest. They come out of his body and they come out of his body. Yeah, and, uh, it's kind of it's like... And sometimes um, these balls that come out of him hit people in the face. Yeah, it's kind of like dodgeball. They're yeah. like gold <laughs> dodgeballs, I guess would be better to say. They um, do, yes, it's... But yeah, that's like not uh, everyone's mutant powers are really cool. Yeah, no, and that's what's funny about it. Like he's, yeah. you know, he's like has terrible. His name is Gold Balls, and he hates it, you know. Mm-hmm. And like, it's pretty hilarious. Oh, like, like and they got me so good with that Australian girl, where I'm like, oh. "You're a cheap ploy to make me love you," and it's working. I know, yes. I know. Like they are making me really like these new characters, yes. which is really hard to Even do. Though, like all the teachers are like the uncanny. Okay, for the record. Cyclops is crazy and has been for several years and that was my favorite thing about Avengers vs. X-Men is that yeah. we can all acknowledge that he has gone off the deep end yes. and mm-hmm. yet I love this book 
Totally. Like, everyone in it is wrong, and, and I love them. And I love, like, <laughs> Maria Hill's part, too, yes. where she's just always like, fuck you, all of you. Like, Maria Hill <laughs> She's so Shield. over it. I mean, which is probably why she got Dazzler. Yeah. Like, you know what? Yeah. You deal with them. Yeah. Like, like really just, I'm just throwing you this issue. These I want to hear like, your thoughts yeah. on Dazzler, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay. Well... Oh, like I, I like I'm excited that they have Dazzler doing anything. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm excited that she's doing anything. But at the same time, it's like she doesn't need fucking shield. Like she's so yeah. much fucking cooler. But nobody will write her. But then, huh. but I'm glad that she's the liaison between fucking Maria Hill and uh, Magneto. Mm-hmm. So Magneto has to deal with Dazzler, which I think <laughs> is a comedy gold yeah. in a lot of ways. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Um, and I, like I said, I'm just glad that you're doing anything. Yeah. I, I feel like Dazzler's never going to be done right until one day Marvel calls me and asks me, like, what my opinion is. And then I'll be like, well, let me <laughs> tell amazing. you, I got a lot of ideas. Um, I did like the way they used her some in the Matt Fraction run, which unfortunately I can't recommend as much as I want to because I, I loved the writing and hated the art for a good portion mm-hmm. of it. Um, but so, you know, since then, what, what has she even been doing? Nothing. Like, like I feel like I... She, she nothing. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, she was in that extreme X-Men nonsense that I was like, no, uh, but I'm not But I like the this. fact that in uh, Battle of the Atom, uh, the guy who comes across the Blackbird mm-hmm. after Gene and Scott take off, mm-hmm. totally listening to Dazzler's like, new yeah. skit. Yeah. Do yeah. the thing with Gold Balls' his sister. That was so cute. Oh, yeah. Where she's just like, yeah, is this you? Why do you have this? Yeah, she, <laughs> yeah, Gold, okay, Dazzler, as agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., goes to confront Gold Balls, who used to... <laughs> T-Bone's totally laughing. Who, who used to be a part of uh, Uncanny X-Men, Scott's team, and they're trying yeah. to get information out of him about where Scott is, and then Gold Balls' sister is like, oh my god, I have your record, like, yeah. will you sign it? And, like, she's just super pumped about it, and it's a really fun moment, yeah. for sure. Um, I will say the adjectiveless mm-hmm. X-Men has been pretty interesting. I think right now we're on number four. Which um, unless you're the, doing Battle yeah. of the Atom, which it's number five. But um, I will say with number four, I thought that fucking Wolverine was a little too nice. To it was, there was a like, lot of cutesy cute. It was a little cu- too cutesy, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, but I, it wasn't bad, though. I, I, I mean, do. I love those two. I, I was a little surprised that, like, I'm hoping there'll be more that ties into it later mm-hmm. because it's... It's it's just sort of jarring to read an X Men story where they go out and have fun and don't get attacked by a crazy monster. Yeah, like yeah. it's a which, little which weird. Which I like, which um, I'm for, but I felt like Wolverine was just a little too like, oh, let's just hang out, but I, me and Jubilee and this baby, you know? It was yeah, like, but, but it sort of brings it back it, to it does. It I does. mean, like I grew up on the Wolvie and Ju- exactly. Jubilee yeah. stories. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's like, that's, true. That was my first. That will never be weird. To be, like I know a lot of people for whom they're like they're still not over the idea of Wolverine having all these family associations and this mm-hmm. paternal side, and they're like, "What? He's running a school?" But, but like no. for me, that was it. It was Wolverine and Jubilee first, then it was Wolverine and Kitty when I figured out that they existed, and then it was yeah. even Wolverine and Rogue when I started learning my history. And then, like, was, and then Wolverine yeah. and Armor for a very small yeah. amount of time. Yeah, like, he's yeah. Always yeah. Had, he's always had, he's had a, a young this girl, non creepy mentoring kind of thing. Right. That he does, yeah. like yeah. For it's very sure. like Lone Wolf and Cub. It yes. really is. Yes, one hundred percent. Yes, it is. And let me tell you, man, all new X Men has never missed a beat. Mm. All new no. X Men has just killed it, killed it, killed so it, killed good. it, killed it. Uh, I will say, in the Battle of the Atom, I loved it when. Okay, so this is the deal. So these X Men from the future. Come back to present day. Which, by the way, to... we're going to touch on this, so pay attention right now. <laughs> I know, this is a lot. This is a, the next thing we're going to talk about. Take notes, and if you need to, travel back to this point in the podcast. <laughs> yes. To, to they talk to the present day X-Men, who are harboring the first class of X-Men, who Beast brought forward in time, yep. um, to tell them that the old X-Men need to go back to their old, their regular time period, because they're gonna fuck shit up yes. being in the present day shit, but... Which has been the danger of this whole series, and the right. reason that it should have been a train wreck, and except turned out to be awesome. But it's now they're kind of like, no, awesome. but yeah, it was a bad idea. Like, <laughs> you guys gotta send them back. <laughs> and the thing is, Jean Grey doesn't want to go back, because Jean Grey knows that she She's gonna fucking die, right. you know. So she's so that's like, "That's why she goes on the this. land." Like, yep. screw you. And the thing I don't is, just die. I die 
twice. twice. Yeah, twice. And I love the fact that they have this issue where her and Beast are kind of hooking up and having a romantic moment. The original her really? and Beast, not her and, and kind new of, Beast. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I loved reading that because for a minute you were like, oh, is this getting weird where Beast is thinking about she looks just like the girl that I... Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, wait, no, it's not weird. It's super classy because he would never say anything and right. he doesn't and know she's that she's really listening and then she just goes and... to the age-appropriate Beast and is like, what the heck, man? Yeah, and that was really cool. <laughs> like, but then I love in this new issue in Battle of the Atom where these new X-Men show up from the future, they're, they have a who claims to be no, Xavier's about? grandson who looks just like him. him. I don't no, trust no. him either. I don't trust him. I don't no. trust him. And he's shielding everyone, all the new future X-Men from Jean Grey. And Jean Grey's like, at first she goes to old school beast, first class beast, and says, we gotta get the fuck out of here. They're shielding me from their thoughts. I don't trust these motherfuckers. And he's like, <laughs> no, something cool is coming. Yeah. Like, something fascinating is happening. I'm gonna stay here. So then, she reaches out to Scott, who first class <laughs> Scott, and says, these fuckers, I don't, they're shielding their, their thoughts from me. What it says the same thing right. to him. And he's like, okay, let's, get let's go. Let, and does not question Actually her. Actually absurdly romantic. It's yeah. so romantic. And then they go on the <laughs> lamb and they run off and they create a diversion. And then, you know, and then she sees like Scott take off his shirt and he's like, what are you looking at? And she's like, oh, and it's, it's like, oh, it's so adorable. cute. Oh, man, girls, girls, we, I know. <laughs> it's so bad. But it's what's so great about a couple who like, they've been like the first couple of X-Men comics for so long. Yeah. As, mm-hmm. as you were saying yeah. before, like a lot, you're, you're far from alone in the like, Jean, it's been hard to make her interesting to people. It's been hard to get her away from this, like, I'm the stable one, I'm the old school one, I'm the den mother of the Mm X-Men. Like, and it's, so it's, it's sort of been the mission statement. Like, this kind of lives or dies on whether it's working to sort of make people realize, like, you know, that's the thing with someone yeah. like Gina. She's just been in the shit since she was, like, 15. Yeah. Like, she's never gotten a break from that ever. And now no. she knows that she never will. Yeah. Like, and she's and, freaking out. Yeah. And, like, that's so great and so human. And they've really humanized her, which I really enjoy. And the fact that Kitty has to train Jean. It's just I know, so crazy. I know. And Kitty's oh. like, I don't like this. And I love that fucking Rachel Gray. <laughs> like, her and Rachel Gray keep having like, these like, moments. Like, no, we're not even going to yeah. acknowledge uh, this. Uh, this and, is weird. And then there's a twist in Battle of the Atom, which I'm not going to say say right. because I don't want to ruin it for people who haven't read it but there is another gray situation going on that's really fucking cool it's so good it's so fucking cool fuck you it's so cool and I'm excited <gasps> about it and uh, I okay so if you if you haven't read it yet please stop listening here because I just have to be like just oh yet. my god you guys Molly Hayes Okay, I was gonna. Oh, you, ah, you sorry, stole sorry, it from I'm me. Sorry. You stole it. I was gonna talk about that. Molly for the Runaways. I know. I have not. Ah, I haven't read the Runaways. I'm such an asshole. I'm she, such an asshole. So oh, she's Amy, a ten year old. She's sorry. It's okay. A mutant it's okay. power. Like she, she sometimes has super strength, but like she's a ten year old, and so she kind of pick, has to pick. Like anyway, there's there's a whole complicated series of stuff going on in Runaways, and everybody kind of has their own different thing. They're yeah. not all mutants, but in her case, she happens to be. And like, what you need to know about this ten year old is that she kind of gets the name Bruce. Mm -hmm. Uh, but she wants to go with Princess Powerful. Right. (laughs) Right, okay. Um, And so she's sort of both of those things. Like, and she's amazing, and she fights with everyone, Mm -hmm. and, like... Yeah. uh, And and so now you've met future her, and she's amazing, and I love her. I I know. I love the fact she's like, Molly Hayes, sir, we've met, like, six times. (laughs) Yeah, she does make it. She's like, why does he never remember me? Like, talking about Wolverine. And by the way, Brian K. Vaughn wrote Runaways. Yeah. Joss Whedon wrote Runaways. Uh Yeah. That series has such a special spot in my heart. I love that series. Yeah, dude. Like, X-Men is just fucking killing it right now so uh you know know, if you're if you have to choose avengers versus you know x-men whatever right now i would say i would lean towards x-men although avengers may shape up to be something that's totally fucking ridiculous and awesome (laughs) which you probably probably will just saying yeah Yeah, which you probably will i'm waiting i'm waiting to make the apology but you should you should (laughs) wait for the trade i'm going to wait for the trade if you're looking to do monthlies i would do battle of the atom x-men monthlies versus doing infinity monthlies absolutely you know that's Mm -hmm. i think that's but they're they're also on a a different scope this will be over in two months like Totally. But now this everything we've been talking about the time travel. I was gonna do this whole thing about Superior Spider Man, what's going on in there. Oh yes. But but we're gonna switch gears a little bit okay, because okay. this leads into the fact that Marvel has something pretty big going on there's right now. There's something good. There's, there's something, something in the going works. on. Yeah. With everything that happened with Age of Ultron, which it kind of, of that series redeemed itself for me. Yeah. But everything about Age of Ultron was that you gotta stop time travel. <laughs> Like, right. You can't keep messing fragile, with the time and you're going to break it. Yeah. And Wolverine broke it. 
Mm. Yeah. Leave it to the one guy with right. absolutely little finesse to go, whoops. So the time stream <laughs> has been broken. Mm-hmm. Uh, Galactus is going to eat the Ultimate Universe. Right. Appears to be. Um, and, and Angela is now a Marvel character, quote right. unquote. Right. Angela, but she I don't know how to spawn. Image that. spawn. Yeah. She's now in there. Yeah. But we now are having problems with the X Men yeah. constantly doing time travel. Right. Because you, you have the, the old X Men and, now and the, the future's the... here. Mm-hmm. What the F? Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to full on super nerd for a second. Miguel O'Hara, the 2099 Spider Man. <laughs> Totally made his appearance in Superior Spider-Man Don, Don Slot written series. Mm-hmm. I have my all-time favorite. You weird... can't see the face he's making right now, but it's just it's delight. Just, yeah, just, it's, just, like, just it's like the sun. Face. Spider-Man it's like 2099 is now Whoa. in the uh, the regular ongoing Superior Spider-Man series. Time traveling, <laughs> time travel from the future, right? And is now so everything that's going on in the Marvel universe is time travel. There's related. time travel. Hmm. So at some point, is this the big? And, I mean, and I'm sorry, but Infinity has a lot to do with time travel. Yeah. And, like, the ripples through space and the mm-hmm. time continuum. And yeah. All that cool stuff. No, and I feel like this is I'm all... I'm pretty sure someone drew a DeLorean in the background on one of the issues. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. But this is all leading up. It this feels like... This is all like... leading up to something even bigger? Yeah. Which, you know... Are we getting, I like... I don't know, the... and, and, and you know bigger. what? I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if it did, even in 2015, because 2015 is going to be, like... At least for movies, yeah, crazy fucking giant events. Like, and like I'm you talking know? about, like the long story play. Yeah, like how long can we keep this going until like are we is Marvel about to do something that's gonna like oh DC did zero hour? <laughs> that's nothing compared to like what we're planning. I don't know. Right. If like, I, 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 I don't I know. know if I want that. I, I know. Would, I mean, mm. if it's great, it'll be great, but weird and traumatic well, and it's time, there's something time going stuff on. is always I honestly think there's something going on time stuff is always willy bigger. nilly but you're right like you're totally onto something and I didn't realize it at first but you're right like there's all these time things going on throughout Marvel titles all yeah. the titles I, there's others I haven't even mentioned yet that yeah. like it's still going on but like the whole Fantastic Four like we're gonna leave for a couple years oh, and yeah. right. to the place yeah. where we left and somehow we're right. still popping in and out to the Illuminati every so often yeah. and there's questions there's questions raised okay there's, so yeah. I'm not the only one that's answering this <laughs> no it's it's uh, you're right you're right. there is some time shit Miguel going O'Hare, on. Twenty ninety nine Spider Man's back. Yes. So Aww. Superior Spider Man. Superior Spider Man. Okay, so let's get in on it. Um, set it up right now. We're at issue seventeen. That's the we're most at issue seventeen, which was the introduction of twenty ninety nine. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. issues fifteen, sixteen previous to that was uh, Doc Ock is still in in Spider Man's body. Still by Spider Man's and uh, now body. he has Spider Henchmen. Yes, he does. And he has a spider <laughs> island that he works at. He's and got, then he's, Yeah, he's got a secret lair. Yeah. Uh, he's got minions. Yeah, he's got giant robots. He's got a cool new costume, which I actually really approve I of. I like the new costume. I think that's better. And, and I think it's definitely Ultimate Spider-Man influenced, but it's yeah. okay. okay. Yeah, but and, it's uh, more villainish, I have which it is like villain-ish. what he would wear. And he you just know? took down the Hobgoblin. Mm-hmm. And, the, like, and not waiting for the Hobgoblin to make the next move. And right. then I go stop him. He's like, fuck he you. He actually puts out the word. Like, he does, like, this public announcement. He takes over all closed, uh, cap- or closed circuit television. Takes over all the media. Yeah. And actually tells New York, this is the guy I'm looking for. Tell me where he is. I'm coming after him. Right. Like, and actually puts, like, put like throws it down. Like, I'm coming for him and you guys are going to help me. Yeah. And actually hunts down. And the guy, the guy is at... Yeah. The, the guy is at the bugle... Yeah, he's like the evil version of Peter Parker. He's like the evil version of Peter Parker, where he's taking pictures of himself as Hobgoblin and selling to him. Right. And then, and then uh, what's his face at the fucking Bugle? What's his name? Uh, which Bugle the, dude? The guy who's like, nobody say anything. We're going to lock it down. The first person to say anything is fired. Yeah, Robertson? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he's Mr. like, Robertson. nobody talk about it. But then somebody still does. And then fucking they take it. Or they try to take him. And then... Mm-hmm. And then he gets loose, and then he's, like, dealing with this Green Goblin bullshit that's underground, and, like, oh, my God. It's just... And it's just really cool, because I do like the idea that Dr. Octopus, if a villain became a hero, they are way more proactive, as opposed to when a superhero is reactionary. Yeah, 100%. I love... I mean, and I know Don Slott is just getting so much crap. that heroes are reactionary instead of proactive, like... I, I mean I, I don't I don't know like there's a reason that heroes don't behave like villains yeah right. I mean there it, it, and, all, and I definitely think there's gonna be lessons to be learned from this this is all yeah. like this can't go on forever I know, this isn't I, gonna be perfect yeah should be reading this but I'm but waiting for so the many fallout. mixed feelings yeah yeah no it's interest it's interest like I personally love 
uh, you know, like gray areas and, and ambiguousness. And mm-hmm. this is like a, definitely one of those where mm-hmm. it's just like, he's a bad guy, but he's trying to be a good guy, but he's doing it in all the bad guy ways. And it's really interesting to watch how it unfolds because Spider-Man is very reactionary. He doesn't proactively go out and find people and take them down beforehand. He only does it after they've done something. And it's like part of you is like, yes, like fucking take them down. Yeah. But then at the same yeah. time, you see the pitfalls of that. Yeah. yeah. It's really interesting. Like, you know, I know this isn't going to last. Like, I, right. I can't wait to see what the fallout is. So we, can, can I still a, feel yeah. rest assured, like, that, that we're, we're getting Peter back at some point? Like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how When you say this isn't yeah. going to last, I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know how they're going to do it, but I will say that I have liked fucking Doc Ock as Spider-Man far more than I've liked Peter Parker as Bar- Spider-Man just because he's just so much more interesting and unpredictable and he's just like really brought but a new dimension. Does that overcome the basic concept of like so a bad guy stole a good guy's life and it worked the end. Read the story the, about how the bad Peter guy Parker is going to make I a think, return. I mean you could look at it that way but for me I've always looked at it at that Peter was able to bestow upon with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. And someone as screwed up as Dr. Octopus. Yeah. yeah. I like the Dr. Octopus. Oh, so uh, well, in that case, he, he that gave lesson. him a second chance. Like, he, in that right. way, he almost sacrificed his life giving somebody. But he didn't get a choice in the matter. It doesn't no, count he didn't. as a sacrifice if you don't get to. Yeah, that's true. He like, did it. And he was against it. I mean, he was very. He was like, trying to make sure it didn't happen. Right. Yeah. But, but it happened anyways. Um, but it's. But it's interesting how Dr. Octopus has taken the with great power comes great responsibility yeah. idiom, you know, I did thing. Read the, and the one where he's like dating Mary Jane and you're like getting ready to be super freaked yeah. out and then it actually they handled it really brilliantly. They did. Where, where he was kind and of we like we were making a lot of jokes about it cuz it was creepy. It was yeah. it was so, really creepy. Because that and that was a big problem I had where I'm kind of like so are we going into the like issues of consent and body swapping and uh, weird territory? <laughs> <laughs> Also, you used to be married to your own aunt, and like, there's a yeah. whole host of things here. But, but like, I love that <laughs> the, the way they resolve that particular thing with him being like, oh, he figured out what I never could. That, yeah. that he really did need to walk and, away. And like, now, that was cool. and he that did end up. Cool. He finds out that Peter Parker never got his PhD. Oh, I know, right? So he's like, what the fuck? Like, I didn't know a PhD, so he goes back to school to get a PhD. No, he's doing But he hates it because he's like, got this. Professor who he used to know growing up, uh-huh. like as Doctor Octopus, and uh-huh. he like doesn't respect the guy. He thinks he's an idiot, but he ends up meeting this uh, this dwarf chick mm-hmm. named Anna. Is that her it's name? It's Anna, and she's a sweetheart because she is in the same position where um, she's always constantly fighting to prove that she's just as big as everyone else in the room. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so they've started Aww. dating. So he's dating I, I, Anna, dating, someone who knows him as... he's affectionate towards her. Yeah, yeah. But, like, but you can get around some of those things by being like, this person only knows the new version of you, therefore they're getting into something with right. their eyes open. Yes, right. like 100%. And, I, and it's it's done really well. It's and she's been... quote-unquote tutoring him, mm-hmm. but really she's helping him along because she recognizes that he can't stand the professor, yeah. but she's going to mm-hmm. help him along to get the, the doctorate mm-hmm. and... And, yeah. and to get it done, but uh, yeah, Superior Spider Man's just been—it's been a great series. It's been so good. Like it's been I, I brave. can't. Like you were telling me earlier, Kirk, that people are giving Dan Slot like death threats and shit. Mm. And I know, and I know it's very like I guess it's polarizing. It's a very polarizing very. Uh, comic, yeah. but I fucking love it for one. I don't know. Let's it's, just well, I think it, it's brave. I, and it's again, interesting. It's shaking with, it up. Yeah, and going back to everything we've talked about at the beginning of this episode, look look at how brave Marvel will get. Right, exactly. And that's like, why I oh, you love can't Marvel. do that. Actually, watch. We're going to make a bad guy a good dude. Yeah. And then talking about like, the, like, two years is a good run, Dan Slott has put in his time on these books. That's the one thing that makes me most inclined to give it the benefit of the doubt, is that, like, they didn't fire everybody, bring in a bunch of new hot shots, and they were like, here's our thing. We're no. going to make a bad guy the good guy. Like, it's someone who's worked on right. Spider-Man, loves Spider-Man. Who understands Peter Parker. The, so whatever, whether you like the plan or not, it's his plan. And let's not forget, yeah. he took over after Straczynski mm. left. Yeah. He had to, like, basically start all over again because they did a big deuce ex machina. Mm-hmm. Like, so I, can I legitimately yeah. hate uh, One More Day and give Superior Spider-Man a chance? Totally. Good. How? <laughs> just, re- just read them. Okay. They're so great. Can I, I object to the one on the basis of the morals of, like, you don't get to just have the devil win in a story where, like, that's terrible? Everyone and then on the it. other one be like, uh, no, this one's cool, though. <sighs> Help me work my way out of this hypocrisy, because I want to keep hating that. In, 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 it's, in, well, it's the same where like I I loathe like Hickman's like Marvel stuff, but like I eat up. Yeah. Some okay. Okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. I kind of like cry a little bit when I'm reading those issues. Like, how is this possible? But 
Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. No, Superior Spider Man's brought a lot of interesting new things to Spider Man a lot, and uh, I've really, I've really appreciated it, and I would definitely <laughs> recommend it. Like. For me personally, I love villains, mm-hmm. and I love seeing role reversals, mm-hmm. you know, and, like, this is definitely one of those. So, like, I'm inclined personally to do it, but, um, I don't know. It's, it's good. It's I really good. Know. It's good. What's great, I think I was talking earlier about one of our customers who's, like, a 65-year-old dude who's been in comics, like, forever, like, mm. bought Wallywood pages for 50 cents at shows in the 70s, and, like, right. has yes. in stories forever. My favorite thing, he loves Superior Spider-Man. Really? That's awesome. That's he, so awesome. He thinks it's great and it's very exciting and it's doing cool stuff. And, and I was kind of like, all right, well, you have more perspective than everyone else here put together. So maybe I should get off of my, what are you doing? Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very cool. And it's not just, I mean, the fact that, yes, there has been a long play as far as he knows the character, Dan, Dan Slott is really putting his time. Don't forget, Dan Slott's the guy who got his break into comics writing Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, I did not know that. Yeah, Aww. like I mean, he's nice. he's put in his his time. <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of these people have. Yeah. And for as long as he's been working on the title, the fact that he can reinvent a lot of these characters, mm-hmm. especially making J. Jonah the mayor. Yeah, that, that's know, worked flawlessly. Which is great, and introduce these new characters. He's also done an amazing job at the character development. Yeah. Mm. And so it's not just, and again, maybe I I, I got to get off this thing, but Hickman introduces these new characters, and I don't get to know them. Right. Yeah, they're just thrown you know, into this big, overwhelming plot line that you don't quite understand. Right. Although he's then, writing a really fun uh, Sunspot and Cannibal. Oh, uh, yes, he is. It's just bits and pieces. We're not getting enough, and right. it does highlight how but much. They are, they are bros. Yeah, yeah. they're and totally they're a lot, bros. It's, it's very cool. That's cute. But then Slide introduces these characters, and I really genuinely get to know them. Mm-hmm. And there is things with like the new Hobgoblin and how he's like the anti Peter reporter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And. At this one point where, you know, he puts the call out like, Hobgoblin, I'm coming for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I actually, as a reader, went, oh, shit, dude, you're fucked. Yeah, like, like, really, yeah, like, like shit just got real, yeah, like, bro. Like, you're like, fucked. Spider-Man's coming to get you, dude. Yeah, like, you're... Like, you just... I love I love the character development, so I'm getting that with Slot. That's, yeah. that's probably one of the beauties of, no. of that Dan series. Dan Slot, keep doing what you're doing. Don't listen no, yeah. to haters. Oh, yeah. Um, haters gonna hate. Speaking speaking of, of crazy Marvel awesomeness, uh, I've been reading this this novel that Darren, uh, who was on uh, one of our podcasts before, uh, he told me to read Marvel: The Untold Story. It's a novel. So, it's, but it's it's a work of nonfiction, right? It's or a work of it? nonfiction. Okay. It's all nonfiction, and it's just about Marvel comics and mm-hmm. where they came from and how they got to where they are today. Right. I'm not completely finished with it yet. Uh, I'm like two thirds of the way through. But it's really, if you, like, want to know <laughs> about the weird, gossipy bullshit behind Marvel, like, it's so interesting. I feel like it's really fair because it talks about Stan Lee, where it's not like... Because doesn't want a little gossip? Come I on. I mean, come on. Well, dude, okay, let me tell you this. It's history. It's not let, gossip. It's history. L- let me... <laughs> no, seriously. Let me tell you something. Artists... Gossip history plus time. Artists <laughs> are Strike the most... It. Gossipy motherfuckers <laughs> ever meet. Like every time, like if I ever go to drink and draw on Thursdays, it's like they always got the gossip. You totally. know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like they, because they, they. That's the thing. These people work from their fucking homes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like right. they don't have a lot of human interactions. So like when they do, they're like, oh god, blah 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 blah. And it's so interesting the politics behind comic books. You know, it's so interesting. Yeah. And the thing that I really like about this Marvel uh, comics, the untold story is how it talks about Stan Lee where there's a big controversy about him uh, uh, for people who know what's up where you know he takes a lot of credit for stuff that he didn't necessarily completely do not that he didn't have right. a hand in it but um, this and I think that this comic or this novel is very fair in the fact that it shows what Stan Lee did and what he didn't do and what right. other people helped him with you well, know and, it's, and he, it's, he suffers from that weird contradiction of history where like we went from nobody knows the names of anyone who works on comics mm-hmm. to a lot of people know one name now. Right. And that's great, but you're going to get the inevitable backlash where it's like, well, there are a lot more names you should know. Yeah. Like, obviously, you get a lot of sort of Stanley hate and from people who are like, why don't people know who Kirby is? And it's like, well, they yeah. wouldn't know who anyone was if Stanley hadn't been like, what if we have a face out front? And, what if we. And that's the like, thing that they nicknames. really highlight, like, yeah. you know, where it's like he really did bring everyone to the forefront, but then other people, you know, that's the thing. 
a lot of artists are not necessarily great self promoters. You know, that's, right. true. that's, that's not their like, their genius. If people are good at what they're doing, it good at their, what they're good at doing. And Stanley's one of those people too. Like he's he's a carnival barker. I mean, <laughs> he is like, check it out. Look at all these Marvel heroes, and like you know, he gets people excited about it. And, and he is a hype man. He's still damn good at it. No, Don't get he's, wrong. Amazing like, I mean, I get at it. When, he's amazing at it. He's amazing at it. You I know, mean, Stanley's an electric character. Yeah, for you sure. Know? Electric character is is a very good way to describe him. Yeah. Um, and but it just it really does like have a really good interesting deal about how everything came about. Um, I've really been enjoying it. It's right. not a hard read by any stretch of the means. There is a little bit of stuff that's like there's so many names that you're like holy shit. But um, but didn't T Bone also bring up the fact that the book doesn't necessarily need to be read linear? Like you can kind of bounce around it. A yeah, little he, bit. yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump through it. Okay, yeah, cool. Because he was reading the huh. '90s stuff to learn more about the '90s stuff, which I'm not at yet. Because I'm like two thirds. Because I like to read things from beginning to end. And um, I like to just start in the middle of a book. <laughs> <laughs> T-Bone likes to start in the middle of a book. Fuck character development. <laughs> uh, but it's it's definitely if you're interested in the politics behind comics. Uh, if you've it's, been enjoying the new Sturenko Twitter that has set us all in a very highly comic gossip group. I have no, not. No, wait, oh. hold on. I'm I'm. Well, let me pull it up right now. What is it? Oh. Sturenko is on Twitter. <gasps> really? Which is exactly the amazing and glorious train wreck show awesome thing Dude, that you would imagine. It was He's so also been followed by uh, fake Sturenko, who is almost as interesting as real Sturenko, but not quite <laughs> because no one. He's basically the most interesting man in the world if that man were a comic book creator. I don't know if he, you guys should look up a picture. Oh, you're going to you're gonna have to find his, uh, his Twitter account later. That's he, awesome. Yep. He's Sturenkoing. And they, they're actually just talking about it in the, the book that I'm reading, the, yeah. the Marvel book. They're talking about how he's like a young kid and they brought him on mm-hmm. and how he's bringing all these weird ideas to stuff, but how he got like a lot of power really quickly mm-hmm. and like they were like letting him do a bunch of stuff because Kirby left and mm-hmm. you know, it's really, really What's interesting. What's great is the, the introduction to one of the volumes of like, because his work on S.H.I.E.L.D. is was like he was doing a ton of groundbreaking, psychedelic, mm-hmm. awesome stuff on there. And what's great is... The, the run is justly heralded for that, but when I finally sat down to read it, like, I read his introduction to the volume, and he basically was like, yeah, this book was great. I came on because it was completely crap before. And yeah. I was just like, oh, well, my that's God. what they were doing. He was a kid, and yeah. they kept putting him on books that were crap, and they were like, do whatever you want. Is If the numbers go up, then Does it's this fucking guy... great. Oh, you I know? can't say that on the podcast, damn it. Oh. oh. Is this guy, was he, like, the pre-Liefeld? Oh, don't! But he was awesome. He was awesome. Well, though. okay, I'll say this. I okay. Like he had the talent to back that shit up. Because that's what he's I was. Right see, that's that his run was amazing. This, that, he's not right I'm that everything else is terrible. He but was like, awesome. Yeah. But I like the fact that he is this kid. Yeah. And that's how he got his start. Yeah. Like, I, that's a good qu- you point. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No. It's I like mean, Jim Shooter. I mean, he was 14, 15 oh, yeah. when he got into oh, comics. Yeah. What? I did not know that. Yeah. He yeah. was, like, super young. But so were the original dudes. Like, yeah. Kirby was a professional illustrator Dude. by, like, 17, 18. Oh, my God. Like, He's Kirby is such... Overachieving bastards are so good. the depression. Like, you have nothing else yeah. to do with your life. Yes. Work. Yes. Work. Do something. No. Get right. a job. Like, Kirby is such a fucking badass. <laughs> He's, oh, yeah. We've... Oh, it's just, yes. it's just like fuck you, like you're so badass. Yes, like, totally. And, and it's like you would never expect that this fucking badass, fucking World War Two fucking veteran who fucking mm-hmm. like saw piles of fucking bodies in Normandy, like afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Like he oh, showed up to the beach laughing. afterwards and saw these fucking bodies everywhere. And this oh, fucking God. guy is just like. I'm gonna fucking draw comics, you yeah. know. But he's like fucking smokes cigars, and like the, the anti Sorenko in that he has no like I'm Kirby, right? Like, right. I'm yeah. amazing, yeah. and we're yeah. just like, no, you're just sitting there being amazing. No, you're, yeah, you're I too know. Busy being and, and, and that guy too, he came from nothing. Mm. I mean, he was talking about how in the book, they said that how they were so fucking poor. He mm-hmm. grew up so fucking poor that his mom was like. I want to give you a vacation. So he let him sleep on the fire escape for like a week. And that was a vacation for him. And he loved it. Oh, wow. And like, you know, and it's like, and he's like, and I loved it. You know, know? and it's like, fuck you. Isn't it so amazing where like these old school uh, comic creators came from? Like what their Mm. history was. A lot of these guys guys were. There's another one called called Men of Tomorrow that goes into a lot of this. That's very, very good. That's about like Siegel and Schuster and like the early, like like, when it was all like bootleggers. And that's what launched comic books. Because they were like, we need to pretend to ship something so we can put alcohol under it. Make a magazine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like. There's How all cool this shit is that? in it. Like, I mean, yeah. like, you look at Frank Frazetta. If you look at any oh, of dude. Old, he really is, like, this old guy from, from Queens. <laughs> yeah. Who, like, walking down the street would just... You would never guess that he's the guy who... Yeah. Like, would just sit down and overnight paint for ten hours. Oh. And give you, like... 
these amazing fantasy yeah. and, and that's who the thing. influenced so much of that. I didn't yeah. know anything about his background, yeah, if I, actually. If, if you saw, if I showed you a picture of Frank Frenzel, you'd be like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> really? And, it's like, a lot of his uh, stock footage um, photos are literally him hanging out with all his, like, Queen's buddies, uh-huh. like, mm-hmm. smoking cigars. And you're like, <laughs> that guy did not paint no like fantastical fucking no. amazing images like, that have yeah. that have fucking inspired people to this day so wow. yeah, when you, like you know you talk about these people it's like this is really the forefathers of like what we're reading today yeah no way dude guess these guys could totally kick my ass they're so yes. bad i know <laughs> they're saying know. That, like that the ben Grimm actually is kind of a kirby self-portrait like that, that one oh, blew wow. my mind where he's like he's just some kid from the street yeah, like right. yancey street that's all that's kirby's childhood yeah that's like, true that and makes sense jewish so there's yeah, totally. that like, yeah. Well, no, I remember reading some fucking story where uh, some fucking neo-Nazis during World War II were, like, fucking trying to give some shit to, like, fucking Kirby and some other fucking people that were, like, in their fucking thing. And he, and fucking Kirby came down and, like, fucking gave him a run for their money no and, like, way. beat him up or some <laughs> shit. This is the stuff, this is awesome. And this is like, oh, oh my god. You're so, like, he's not a pussy, like, he's an art, and that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand. Just because you're an artist doesn't mean you're a fucking pussy. No. You know, like, yeah, like there's some artists that are pussies, but there's some artists <laughs> that'll fucking kick your ass. Like, you gotta watch out for. Like, and Kirby was one of those fucking guys. Like, Isn't that amazing? Oh, well, anyways, I know that's a total like, non sequitur, but I think it's I know, rad. It's awesome. I know, so awesome. But I guess we should get into any comics. <laughs> well, where are we? Well, okay, we are should, we? but we've, we've hit way more than we can fit in okay. one episode right. at this point. So we're going to split right. this thing up? Either split it up or, well, do you guys want to keep going? Um, What's your schedule like? Let me stop I right now. I do have some shit I have to do tonight.